All right, guys, I want to talk to you a little bit today about electrolysis for guys at Mellotect and, and uh, how to do it real quick, quick setup. Um, I'll top out my bucket first. For, well, first, you want a power supply, DC power supply. Um, you, this is automatic, but I also switch it to manual. You definitely want a manual setup for electrolysis. I'm in the coating industry, so this is all old hat for me. What I did here, I just got a bucket, a five gallon bucket. I put some stainless steel bolts in at this top. I drilled holes, put bolts in there, washers and nuts on the back side. And this is where we're going, we're going to end up putting our plates. Um, then I connected the two with this heavy wire, heavy gauge wire from this, from this bolt on this side. And you got your handle in the middle here. Then on the other side here, you can do two bolts. I do two bolts, or you can do one one bolt. It doesn't matter depending on what you're doing. Um, the larger the item, the bigger you want your uh, plates to be. And I'll talk about that later. Now, first thing we want to do is put water in our bucket. These bolts up so high because we'll never get water up this high in it. And this, then it's dedicated bucket, and you'll never use it for anything else. And it's nice if you got it, you're set up in the garage or wherever. Which is the best place to have it. You want it well ventilated area. Because just because of the fumes that will put off, you can't smell them, but people say they're dangerous, so. This is just regular water. This is out of my well. Nothing special. All right, you want to get some super washing soda from Arm & Hammer. This is the best stuff to get. People say use salt, this and that. This is easy. You just dump it in, mix it up, and it's done. So, you know, that's, all this does is help the current. Put that in there. Doesn't, you want, doesn't really have, matter how much you put in there, as long as you've, you've got enough stirred up. I'm going to put my anodes in now. What I'm using are uh, ACT panels. Um, they look, work really well. You can get them off of eBay for like, I don't know, like three bucks. You can get 12 of them. Um, so, you know, it is, you don't need, I can do four into this in this particular bucket, but I'm going to only do uh, two today. I said I use stainless steel up here just because I don't want rusting and it's not going to hurt it any. This, I would use, I'd recommend cold rolled steel for your anodes. Just uh, make sure they're tight. This one has a burr on it or something. Just 
tighten it down. Pretty good. I'm gonna do the other side. So this is all ready, the bucket's all ready to go. All right, we're going to put this in electrolysis. I do not know what this is. I found it where uh, we found a King George at. Um, I don't know if it's for a big tent or if it's an uh, old hammer of some sort. But we're going to clean it up and hopefully get something off of it. Look cool. Here's some of the other stuff I've done. You know, like buckles. This is great for buckles. An old iron. You know, this is after. Um, this is <laughs> kind of neat. You could have got holes in it. You could hang your coat on it, actually, or whatever. An old chisel. You know, this is what your stuff's going to look at when, when it's completed. Old uh, ox shoe. I need to put more coating on this, but it's a uh, it's kind of neat. If you're going to do electrolysis, you'll probably want to invest in a bench grinder. Um, it's really important to get these ground. Um, that's the most important thing in this whole setup is to, to make sure this piece is ground, or it won't work at all. So. We took this through our bench grinder, got some bare metal showing so we can get a decent ground in here, which is really, really important. What I'll do is I'll wrap this really tight around here. All right, like so. I'll leave enough lead where I can hang it like that. All right. All right, you want to. Hang this, I put some baling wire around around the top to ground it. Hopefully it's grounded good enough. We're going to find out shortly. Um, you want a piece of metal. It doesn't have to be stainless. This is stainless because I like working with stainless because it doesn't rust. We're going to stick this down in here. And what we want, we want it completely covered. All right. And then we want to wrap this around so it doesn't fall you can see already see dirt and stuff coming off of it that's just loose dirt from it uh, being dug and we want it in between the two anodes all right you can see it's in between don't want them touching especially when we charge this you don't want this to touch either one of these plates and we'll never We'll never move this while the power is on. Once it's in there, it's in there and the power is on. You want to completely take the power off to move this whatsoever. All right, without your power supply being plugged in, it's not plugged in, you want to hook up your, terminal, uh, your terminals. You can hook up here, you know, there. You can hook it straight to the panel here. 
it doesn't matter. I kind of like doing it here because it's away from everything. And we'll hook it up to the wire. I'm gonna hook it directly to the wire because I think it works a little bit better. But I mean, I can actually, I can actually just hook it to the steel bar and it would be fine. Then I'll plug this in. Then turn it, I'm going to 12 volt. So it should be on, see, it went up. Let's go over here and see. We want to look in here and we want to see bubbles. If you come over to this side, look down in here. You want to see bubbles coming off the whole thing, not just the wire. You can see it blasting off of there. You see some of the dirt and stuff. So you know it's working. So now at this point, you just let it go and come back and check in a couple hours. All right, we're gonna come out here and check. It's been about an hour. You can see there's some dirt and debris on top. They're still going good. Um, don't worry about saying, oh, you know, I gotta check it right now. It's going good. Um, you're not gonna put it in too long. There's no such thing. It doesn't attack the base metal. This only attacks the rust. That's why museums use this technique because um, it doesn't hurt the underlying metal. All right, it's been a couple hours. I want to check on this. What I always do for safety, I always unplug it. I turn it off. I take the leads off. Then I know it's safe to check. But if you Google, if you Google like uh, anybody get electrocuted by uh, um, electrolysis, you won't find any because you're not going to get a little hook in here. That's, you know, it's coming along. It's going slow. Um, it's going to need to be go in there for longer. You can see it's still got rust on it and there's some getting down to the bare metal. So it needs to go in there for, for a while longer. I'll give you an update. Let's hook this back up. I want to turn it. Ooh. So I can put my leads back on. Make sure the whole thing is bubbling, not just the wire. Okay. All right. You can see the water has changed color now. It's getting dark out, so it might not be as good. Let's go ahead and check it. Take our leads off. All right, this is pretty good. Um, I'll slide this off here real quick. I should have, excuse me. A wire brush. Well, I wanna hit this with a wire brush real quick, and then I'll let you check it out. too bad. You got knocked the carbon off. You see where I took it to the grinder. Now, so pretty much the rust is gone. And uh, part of doing doing this is taking it from an unstable state with all the rust on it and making it stable again. Well, this is still unstable. So what we'll do is we'll we'll treat it. This lot tight rust treatment stuff and you can get it on uh, Amazon for like 30 bucks doesn't cost too much and this is enough to a quart that's enough to last you 
a few years. You can do a lot with a cork. So, I mean, you only have to buy one bottle and you're good for a long time. And I'll cut this off and we'll get some pictures for you. And uh, that will be that. Kind of neat. All right, you just want to get enough uh, rust treatment stuff to, to, to cover the tool because you can't put this back in a bottle because it will contaminate the whole bottle and then you won't be able to use it at all. It will ruin the whole bottle. So just get out what you need and coat this. And that's what it does is just put a airtight bond on here. won't rust anymore and this dries really really quick so I'll be able to put another coat on here probably about 10 minutes all right all right we got everything coated and uh, two coats on it so completely done and that's uh that's pretty much it for as far as the uh, coating goes i mean it's all right i hope this guy's helped you guys out um if you have any questions post them in the comments below um have a good one happy hunting